my name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. To watch more videos on Logstash and programming, do subscribe to the channel. Logstash is a tool based on the filter pipes patterns for gathering, processing and generating the logs or events. It helps in centralizing and making real-time analysis of logs and events from different sources. Logstash is written on JRuby programming language that runs on a Java virtual machine. Hence, you can run Logstash on different platforms. It collects different types of data like logs, packets, events, transactions, timestamps, etc. from almost every type of source. The data source can be social data, e-commerce data, news, financial data, IoT devices, mobile devices, etc. So Logstash is a plugin based data collection and processing engine. It comes with a wide range of plugins that make it possible with easily configured to collect, process and forward data in many different architectures. Processing is organized into one or more pipelines. In each pipeline, one or more input plugins receive or collect data that is then placed on an internal queue. This is by default small and held in memory, but can be configured to be larger and persisted on disk in order to improve reliability and resiliency. So let's talk about some general features. Logstack, Logstash can collect data from different sources and send to multiple destinations. It can also handle multiple HTTP requests and respond data. Logstash can handle all types of logging data as we discussed and some more include Apache logs, Windows event logs, data over network protocols, data from standard input and more. So it can work on all your operating systems and can deal with any type of data which you want it to handle. Logstash also provides a variety of filters which helps the user to find more meaning in the data by passing and transforming it. Next, Logstash can also be used for handling census data in IoT. Let's talk about some key concepts when we jump into Logstash. So the first is the event object. It is the main object in Logstash and it encapsulates the data flow in the Logstash pipeline. So Logstash uses this object to store the input data and add extra fields created during the filter stage. Logstash also offers an event API to developers to manipulate such events. Next is the pipeline. It comprises of data flow stages in Logstash from input to output. The input data is entered in the pipeline and is stored in the form of an event, then sends an output destination in the user or end system desirable format. We saw the diagram of a pipeline in the previous slides and that is the definition right here. So let's talk about what is inside the pipeline. So the first stage of the pipeline is the input, which is used to get the data in Logstash for further processing. Logstash offers various plugins to get data from different platforms. Some of the com most commonly used platforms are file systems, Redis, Syslog, and Beats. The middle stage of Logstash pipeline is the filter, where the actual processing of events takes place. A developer can use predefined regex patterns from Logstash to create sequences for differentiating between fields in the events and criteria of accepted events. The last stage in the Logstash pipeline is output, where the output events can be formatted into the structure required by the destination systems. Lastly, it sends the output event after complete processing to the destination by using plugins. Some of the most commonly used plugins are Elasticsearch, File, Graphite, StatSD, etc. What we are concerned about in this, is this tutorial is Elasticsearch, how we can use Logstash to actually input, input files into Elasticsearch. Let's talk about the advantages of Logstash. Logstash offers regex pattern sequences to identify and parse the various fields in an input event. Logstash supports a variety of web servers and data sources for extracting logging data. It also provides multiple plugins to parse and then transform the logging data into any desirable format and in this case it's going to be JSON. It is a centralized software which makes it easy to process and collect data from different servers. As we talked about, Logstash also uses the HTTP protocol which enables a user to upgrade Elasticsearch versions without having to upgrade Logstash in a log step. There are a lot of disadvantages with Logstash but uh, I am mainly concerned with these two. So 
Working with Logstash can sometimes be a little complex as it needs a very good understanding and an analysis of the input logging data. So as a beginner, it can be very hard or intimidating to actually get into Logstash. And we'll talk about some workarounds for this. Uh, we'll talk about a tool which I have developed, which you can use to index files into Elasticsearch, uh, a lot of files without using Logstash. But at some point uh, when you are scaling up, you have to stop making your own tools and uh, give into Logstash. And that is when Logstash, Logstash can be a bit too complex, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy to use it. Next, the filter plugins are not generic. So you have to find a method so that you are able to correctly sequence the patterns and avoid errors when you're passing files into Logstash and then output it to something else. So yeah, that was a very simple introduction of what Logstash is. Now we can go ahead and install Logstash and also stash our first event. So basically we are going to perform a hello world of Logstash now. So uh, the best way to learn about Logstash is the documentation. So any ELK stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash or Kibana can be perfectly learned and understood with the documentation itself. So during these tutorials, I'll also refer to documentation uh, every single time and uh, use some pieces of code from the documentation because they explain the concept very easily. So uh, the link to all these websites will be in the description below. So you can check them out and start from right there. There'll also be a very good introduction to Logstash, a very good blog, and some other blog references which I have used to prepare for this tutorial. Okay, so just like Elasticsearch, uh, the installation process is going to be the same as we discussed for Elasticsearch and Kibana. So the first step is to check whether your Java version is right or not. So make sure that you have Java installed, and once you run this in your command prompt or terminal, uh, something like this should show up. So there is some uh, extra cases for Linux, Linux systems as well. So make sure you read them before you jump into any uh, downloading step. You can also install a binary and go ahead with that. I think that is what I did for this tutorial. I have a MacBook Air. So I downloaded the targ.gz file and directly placed that into my folder. Then there are some other ways of doing it. You can find the way which is comfortable with you. Uh, people who use Mac OS and you use the homebrew packet manager they can also use these two steps, which I think are the most easiest and simplest step to download a lock touch on a Mac OS and start uh, working with it. So once you do it, let me show you how it looks like. So you will have your lock touch folder in your downloads uh, folder again, but I have dragged it to my home folder because I have Elasticsearch, Kibana and lock touch at the same place. So I can use them together in the same directory. Then once you go inside, you have a binary file in which you have all the Logstash uh, executables and you can use these to start Logstash. So we'll see how that happens in a bit. So yeah, uh, make sure that you have, uh, it is recommended that you have your Elasticsearch server, Kibana and Logstash folders at the, in the same directory or at the same level. So that's easier for you to uh, manipulate them at the same level and also use them side by side. So that is why I make sure that all my folders uh, for the ELK stack are in the same level. So once that is done, let's see how we can start our first event. So again, I'll be using the documentation because it has a very handy documentation which you can use all the time to actually understand how Logstash works. So as we discussed previously, a Logstash pipeline has two required elements, the input and the output, and an optional element called as the filter. The input, the input plugins consume data from a source, the filters modify the data, and the output writes to the destination. And here the destination is Elasticsearch. So we're going to uh, perform an event. We are going to write something in the standard input and use that and check if that Logstash actually logged that event or not. So to test the Logstash uh, installation, we run the most basic Logstash pipeline. So this is the most basic one. So let's do this. Let's copy the first line of code and we CD inside the folder. So we are inside Logstash now. Let me increase the size so that it's clear. Yeah, I think this is good. Yeah, so let's do that again. We CD into Logstash. Then the next is to perform this line of code. So we go inside bin, logstash, 
E and write this piece of uh, configuration. So while this sets up, I think it is currently setting up, so we need to wait for that. Uh, the E flag here enables you to specify your configuration directly from the command line. So that is what the use of this is, the E flag here is, that you can directly specify a command on the terminal or else you have to always make a different file, make a different configuration file and then extract the commands from that file. Okay, so now we can uh, test things very easily because of this. Uh, the pipeline in the example takes input from standard input. So we'll be taking input from stdin and also moves that to standard output. So std out is the standard output here. And it happens in structured format. So once we see pipeline main started, we can uh, then enter what we want to enter. So as you can see, it's now uh, currently configuring. So we need to wait for this. We need to make sure that there are no errors while log slash is building up. So once you see successfully started log slash API uh, endpoint, we can start uh, running our hello world example. So let's start with hello world. So let's say hello world. And as you can see, uh, we have a timestamp, we have a host, my name, and the message which we just logged. So now you can uh, type as many examples as you want. So hello, Donak, hello again. And we, as we can see, uh, log is logging every single element. Now in the upcoming tutorials, uh, we'll actually log some files from Logstash or from our input data source into Elasticsearch using Logstash. And before we actually do that, we'll have one more tutorial between them where uh, we'll talk about a tool which I made called as ES Indexer, where you can actually upload multiple JSON files directly into Elasticsearch without using Logstash. So yeah, this was uh, a very simple brief introduction about how Logstash works. And we'll talk about this in depth in the next videos. Thank you.